We're going to break in here um, Jesus' conversation with the woman at the well. And as soon as she finds out he's a prophet, she wants to argue about which denomination is right. And uh, that's the way most people, as soon as they find out you're a preacher, well, preacher, let me ask you something. What do you believe about this? You know, and they'll bring up something. And uh, the Lord, she didn't need to be worrying about what her fathers believed. She needed to be worrying about getting her life right. You know what the Lord don't want you to do this morning? He don't want you to start arguing about which denomination is right to when you're living in your sin. He wants you to get your sins taken care of first. He wants you to get your sins taken care of before he even heals your body. And he can heal your body and will many times. But you know what he's interested in? Getting them sins taken care of. If, if you're not right with the Lord this morning, that's what you need to do first. Get right with the Lord. My answer to everything is get right with God first and then we'll work on everything else. I believe that. That's simple, but it's true. John chapter 4 Look at what Jesus told her. Look at verse 22. John 4, 22. Um, Jesus told her, he said, you worship, you know not what. You don't even know what you're worshiping, lady. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Look at verse 24. God is a spirit. Now, if your Bible says God is spirit, you got the wrong Bible. God is a, capital S, spirit, a particular spirit. Uh, the new versions say spirit. That ain't right because anything that's spirit ain't God. God is a particular spirit. Not just spirit. There's a lot of stuff that's spirit that ain't God. Matter of fact, there's only one Holy Spirit and the rest of them's unholy. Amen. Right? That's right. So he said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you can't worship God without the spirit and you can't worship God without the truth. A lot of people have a lot of truth and no spirit. And boy, you got something that's deader than a hammer. And then a lot of churches have a lot of spirit and no truth. And you got a mess. You got to have spirit and truth. I want to preach this morning on this subject. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Many of you don't know that song. It, that is a song uh, that they, they sing. You don't hear it much anymore. But times are changing, people. Lord have mercy. And uh, many religions and philosophies in the world, every one of them claiming to be right. Some of them even claim that all of them is right. I don't know how they come to that conclusion. But as soon as you get saved, they descend on you like a swarm of bees. You ever notice nobody talks to you about getting saved when you're lost, you're living wicked? And then as soon as you get saved, you found out everybody at work is some kind of Christian and they try to convert you into going to their church. Or, you know, you need to come to our church. They didn't, you didn't, they didn't know, there's nowhere to be found all them years when you was living like the devil. And as soon as you get right, they're ready to come and help you learn how the church that you got saved in is wrong. And, uh, the, and the truth that got you out of sin is wrong come to their truth that they never told you about all them years and years and years. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Uh, I'll never forget, uh, when I first got saved, I got a dose. You've heard my testimony. I don't have time to tell it this morning, but I got saved. When I got saved, I got a dose. And when we got saved, us boys up there in Nebo, it brought a change in my life. Everything changed. Everything changed. Honest to goodness. I'm, and, and back then, it seemed like when people got saved, their lives changed. Now, you, you, you can be saved and still be in Hollywood and make dirty movies and everything else. That's what people say. But back then, the Bible, we took it seriously. The Bible said if any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, all things become new. Still believe that, literally. That's, old things becoming new ain't what saves you, but after you're saved, things are different. And um, 
me and these boys got saved, and I was 18 years old, and when I was 19, uh, the Lord called me to preach. I'd been, he'd been dealing with me for several months, and uh, I, I, just, I just know he wanted me to preach. I mean, I, I, I preached in my sleep. I preached driving down the road. I, pre- I could see a crowd of people out, and I was just preaching. And finally, I said, all right, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, then, then I'll do it. I'll never forget going home and I'll find out my daddy, daddy wasn't saved at that time, and he found out I was going to be a preacher, and he just sort of, oh, gosh. You know, like, and he, he said there wasn't never been no preacher. He said his aunt used to be a preacher up in West Virginia, uh, but that was the only preacher that had ever been in the family. And uh, she'd stomp them high heels and slap you upside the head with a pocketbook or something. Uh, but anyway, uh, th- th- uh, I got saved and started preaching. Well, when I got saved and started preaching, we got a hold of the truth, and I'm telling you, I wanted the world to know. I wanted the whole world to know what I had found as the truth. So me and these boys got together, and we used to go give out tracts all the time. We'd order tracts, uh, you know, gospel tracts. Like I used to take them and just take them and just give them out on the street. We used to do it in Marion, up there at the flea market, every single Saturday on the street. And then we started taking what we call missionary journeys. I would start taking these missionary journeys and what we'd do, we'd save up a little bit of money and I had that big old yellow van and there'd be three or four of us getting there. We didn't have no money to get no motel room or nothing like that. Uh, we, we'd put all our money together and go to Crystal and get a Crystal burger, you know, buy, uh, get three of them for a dollar or something and them little bitty, they're square, you know, them little Crystal burger things, awful. But uh, we, that's what we'd eat and go give out tracks and then had the best time ever was. We went to Gatlinburg, we went up here, up to King, Sport and Johnson City and Elizabethan and, and uh, uh, Knoxville and play and give out track. Well, we's gonna go to Atlanta. And I, I said, man, we need to go to Atlanta. Atlanta's a hell hole. We need to see the city of Atlanta repent and, and get converted and come to the Lord. And they said, let's do it. We saved up our money. We appointed a time. We all got this and now Friday, boys, we're gonna meet at early in the morning. We're gonna take my old van and we're gonna go to Atlanta and the Lord's gonna save that city. I'm telling you, we went down there and we here we went. Now, when I was 19, my cousin was like 15, my other cousin was like 17 or 16, and there was about five of us, and here we went. Uh, never been too far out of Nebo. I'd been to Atlanta one time, that was with the basketball team. When we, we, won, we won a championship or something, and they took us to Six Flags. And uh, here we went. So here we went down there to Atlanta, Georgia. Here we go now. Uh, the old five rednecks from Nebo, and we're going to go convert the city of Atlanta. We drove downtown, found a parking place. We all prayed and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And we said, all right, let's go. And we got our tracks and we went out on the street. And boy, I'd, I'd never been out on the street in a big city like that. Uh, and my Lord, I, we went out there and I had people laying around, passed out drunk. And people was laying, sleeping on, under cardboard and, and you know, and, and laying around there. And, uh, and I said, well, here we are. We've got the truth. God is gonna be with us. We're gonna convert this city. We, we know the Lord now. Everybody here, and we started witnessing, and, and uh, we, heard, we heard something off in the distance. There's a big old park in the middle of Atlanta, if you've never been downtown. I can't remember the, what they call that, uh, but it's uh, right in the middle of town. What is it? Huh? Continual. Centennial. Uh, anyway, it's a park right in the middle of town. And, and we, as we was walking up a few blocks, we could hear music going boom, 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 boom. I said, Lord, have mercy, they're having a rock concert. I said, come on, guys, there'll be thousands of people out here. Well, let's go witness to them. But as I got closer and closer and I could see the performers down on the stage, I thought, I don't look like a rock concert. All these guys had on white suits, solid white suits. And they were on the stage, and there was probably 2,000 people around in that grass just sitting around in there like that. And I thought, this is a rock concert, but it's sort of weird. Like, and then I, then I could hear them, and they were saying, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And people were sitting there and, and drunk and, and dancing and everything. And I said, Son, what in the world? And I said, uh, this is a Christian, what is this? And they were singing about the Holy Ghost, and, but it, the, the music wasn't uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, but the, the words were. And uh, I, I remember thinking, good night, how are we gonna quit? And about that time, one of them boys punched me and says, look, Danny, look. And I turned around and it looked like Moses. Honesty. 
had stepped right out of the Bible. Robe, a lot of hair, beard. Here's Moses. Standing there like that. I said, Lord, there's Moses. Sure as the world. We're in the twilight zone. Anything liable to happen in a place like it. And I remember sitting there and I thought, oh my goodness. Uh, and we tried to witness him. And he was sort of like, repent for the end is nigh. I thought, oh gosh. I don't know what he is. It ain't Moses. And it ain't whatever we are. It, it, we, we ain't that. And we started going around there. And then somebody said, Brother Danny, look over there. That music was booming the whole time. Boom, boom, boom. And there was a guy standing there with his arm out like that and had a snake wrapped cold all the way around his arm and his head just like that right there. I said, oh my goodness. Now you don't think much about that now, but back then, you know, that was a long time ago. We started trying to witness him. We walked down the street. This other guy was standing here and he had, this, had these blocks and had a board across there and he was getting all worked up and he was doing like this, psyched up and everything. And he'd go, hoo and try to break up block with his hand like a karate chop. And it was all this is going on out there in that park. And then they had this table set up, and these guys were com completely bald headed, completely had their head shaved, and they had a little sprig pigtail coming out right here, way down here on their back. And they had on these pink looking, you ever wash something in the, in the, in the, dry, in the wash machine that turns it pink? Like that's what color their robes were. And they had them on, they were getting out religious literature, and it looked like. Some of you cracked an egg right there and just let it run down their face. That, and that was their religious get up, their garb. And they were sitting here and they were giving out cookies. I said, Lord, I wouldn't eat one of them things for $100. And then, it, and then I was standing there with these tracks and all these millions of people around and the devil jumped on my shoulders. And he said, so, you come down here to convert the whole city of Atlanta, Right? You little hillbilly redneck from Nebo, you ought to go back home. See how the world is. See how many different beliefs there are. See how many, see how many people believe different things. What makes you think you're right and they're not? That's what I'm gonna talk to you about this morning. What makes you think being an old time Christian is the right and by the way, only way to fellowship with God? Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he'll, he'll come in and find pastor and meet God. Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, if that's not true, anybody's guess is as good as anybody else's. What gets you to God? But in my heart, I knew. I said, Lord, I know we're right. I know this thing's real. I know it's real. Well, so I went home and I, I started thinking and I jotted down a few things and I, I, I've learned a lot over the years, obviously, and done a lot of study and research, obviously. I mean, 40-something years of pastoring, you, you can't be dumb unless you're just lazy. And uh, I've learned that there are seven marks of a cult. And I'm gonna read them off to you and then bring you a short thought. There are seven marks of a cult. Because people say, every time somebody does it, oh, that's a cult, oh, that's a cult. There are seven marks of a cult. I'm gonna read them off to you. I'm not gonna comment on them, but just a second. And maybe one day I'll preach a sermon on these. Seven marks of a cult. This does not mean that everybody who does one or two of these is a cult. But every cult has most or all of these characteristics. Number one, a cult claims extra biblical revelation. That means cults believe stuff that's not in the Bible. That's just as true as the Bible. Number two, work cults always add works to salvation. Uh, never, no cult teaches that salvation is a free gift of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to do something. You have to do something or, or believe, in, believe something or go to somewhere in order to be saved. Number three, all cults have an uncertain hope. None of them say, I know where I'm going when I die. And the reason is because they think their performance will make them acceptable or unacceptable to God. Number four, all cults have an earthly head. That means there's some big head, big shot somewhere running the whole show and the people's out working. Number five, uh, they have special discoveries. 
like old the angel Moroni gave Joseph Smith the baloney. And, uh, and they start, start the Mormon church or the Jehovah Witness church. They study, they have special discoveries. We've discovered something nobody's ever found before. Therefore, we're right. No, no, no yet neither. Number six, they sell things to make their organization prosper. They're always selling something. And sit out preaching and getting people saved. They're always selling something and bringing the money to headquarters. And number seven, they never, listen to me, they never major on scriptures that are aimed at a Christian. Their favorite verse of scripture is in Ezekiel or Ecclesiastes or in Exodus. I did not say Exodus or Ecclesiastes or, or uh, uh, Ezekiel is not part of the Bible. I said every part of the Bible is for me. Every part of the Bible is not to me. Right? Right? You've got to understand who you are and where you are. Every part of the Bible is not to you. God didn't tell us to build an ark. He told Noah to build an ark. You gotta find out where you are and you know where you are? You're in the, you're in the epistles of the church. Um, uh, uh, Romans through Philemon. There in your New Testament, that's Christian doctrine. That doesn't mean we don't, we don't respect the other part of the Bible and believe it, but you have to put it in its proper place. Every cult like the dead know nothing, to teach soul sleep. Like remember the Sabbath, to make Seventh-day Adventist. Like to, they take portions of scripture that's not aimed at Christians and try to put it on the Christian church. So, that being said, I wanna give you th three things right quick how, how we know that being an old-time Christian is right. Number one, number one. You know how you know you're in the right Religion, we'll, call, we'll use that word, but that's really not what it is. Uh, the belief system or church is that being an old-time Christian is the only group in the world that attracts little children. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? You thought I was going to go into some Hebrew and Greek stuff like we've been studying on Wednesday night on which Bible's right. Do you see that little girl up here a minute ago singing? You don't find that in the false religions of the world. I mean, you don't go uh, to a Buddhist temple where people are, you know, whatever they do. I mean, you don't go to, you know, those things, in Ramadan and stuff, where all of a sudden everybody stands there all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, one, two, three, everybody bow, puts their face to the ground. Uh, that song that she sung there a minute ago wouldn't fit in a place. You know, you have the right belief system because it appeals to every age group. Three-year-olds love Jesus. The smartest people in the world, the most brilliant minds I've ever run across, believe the Bible and believe that Jesus is real. And then the most simple-minded people are also, and, and I'm not saying that to be ugly, simple-minded people, maybe that are maybe you know not as, as intelligent, still can say, I love Jesus. And a four-year-old can say, I love Jesus. And then a man with 180 IQ who studied the Bible and history and everything can say, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one thing that lets me know for a fact. I mean, God, this thing appeals to every age group. And now you know why false, you know why kids don't like false religion? Because kids are honest and they can stare a hole through you and they know a hypocrite when they see one. Lord have mercy, it's hard to fool them. You can fool adults, but you can't fool kids. Guy comes in here and he's got a, a robe on down to the floor and his collar turned around backwards and he's walking like this right here. Mama and dad say, oh, there's a holy man. The kids say, what's he doing, going trick-or-treating? <laughs> see, they, 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 you see that, they, they can spot it. They can spot a religious fake five miles away. I'll never forget one time up in Marion, years, years and years ago, we had this guy come in and I, I got talked into letting him preach. And uh, he was some uh, dignified, smart guy from somewhere. And, uh, and there, those kids up there, you know, they were, Lord have mercy. They, I mean, if, they was, I mean, if, they, if there's anything wrong at all, they could find it. And, and the best way to know fake is know the real thing, like I've been telling you. I preached 300 Sundays on the real thing, and I'm preaching four on the fake, four out of 300. So uh, study the real thing, 296 out of 300. And uh, I remember we had studied in the power of God moved and people got saved, you know, and everything. And I let this guy get up and preach one time, and uh, he got up and he went, ladies and gentlemen, it is such an honor to be a part of this conference. 
I went down and Carrie, she was about 15 back then. She said, Daddy, what is this? <laughs> I said, hush, be quiet. <laughs> you know, I was saying the same thing, to tell you the truth. You know, kids can spot it, man. They can spot it a mile away. You know, they said down the little kids, they, uh, little kids, the teacher, the teacher, the teacher one Sunday and the little boy told, he, he said, my dog got killed this week and he's laid out there in the middle of the road and, and the teacher got him and said, that's okay, honey. Your little dog is up in heaven with God. He said, what does God want with a dead dog? <laughs> See that, you can't fool them. They're smarter than you think they are. And you'd be surprised, you'd be surprised how kids can spot a fake Said one time he was driving down the road and they saw a big rainbow in the sky and the kid looked up and he said, my, my. Mama said, just think, honey, what an artist the Lord is. He had all those colors in the sky and the yellow and the orange. Look what an artist he is. And the little kid said, Mama, he done all of that with his left hand. She said, what? He done all of that with his left hand? She said, where'd you get that? She said, well, the preacher said Jesus was sitting on his right hand. <laughs> I don't know how they come up with that stuff. But I, listen, I think, you know what I think? I think everybody ought to teach a little class about four and five-year-olds for about a year. You talk about learning your Bible. Oh, my goodness. You think you've got it down pat, buddy. They'll hit you with a question that uh, Einstein couldn't answer if he's saved. I, they said one time a teacher taught on Lot, and, and, and he said God told Lot to take his wife and flee out of Sodom. And, you know, the, uh, the wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Lot went to the other city, and the little boy said, but what happened to the flea? Some of y'all missed that. Went right over your head. Right there. <laughs> Amen. I like one, I'll give you this, I gotta move on. I heard one the other day said, uh, the Sunday school teacher told this little boy, he was teaching class one day, and he went home and told mama said, well, how'd you like Sunday school, son? He said, I didn't. She said, why? She said, he said, my teacher said that he was gonna pray that the Lord would keep me in a good Christian home. And heck, I wanna stay with you guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> They know, they know when things ain't right, don't they? They sure do. They know when things ain't right. These two little boys standing in church one day and, and they's outside and one of them said, man, I bet Noah sure did do a lot of fishing when he's on that ark. He wanted to go fishing. He said, no, he didn't. He didn't have two worms. That's pretty smooth, man. That's pretty smooth. You gotta get up pretty early in the morning to fool them kids. You gotta get up pretty early in the morning. I mean, you don't see that in Buddhism. You don't see that in Islam. You don't see that in other religions. Kids are not, you know what, they're, they're trained into it. Now when you get old, you gotta love Allah and you serve Allah and it's Allah. Would, uh, no, you, kids wanna go to church. Kids wanna get up and say, I mean, you don't hear that Buddha, well, me, this, I know. You don't hear that. For Confucius, tell me so. You don't hear that. They just don't do it. There's something about the Lord Jesus Christ that attracts every age group, every ethnicity, every color, every tribe on this earth are drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ and the old time Christian life. So one time his kid at church, and this guy, he's down to the hall and he's praying, oh God, oh God, help me, oh God. And the little boy's just standing there looking at him. He's screaming, he said, Daddy, if that man was closer to God, he wouldn't have to holler so loud, would he? That may be true, I don't know. But ours the only one that attracts little children. Amen? Number two, I'll say this. Old time Christianity is the only belief system in the world that has tears of joy. That has tears of joy. See, you thought I was gonna give you some deep theological thought. No, just a simple thing. Little kids are attracted to it and tears of joy. That means people crying when they're happy. Other religions don't do that. The only time there's tears shed in other religions is when pain is inflicted on them or they're beat or mistreated or being cruel. I've got a video, I may, I'll probably show it to you next Sunday night, of some priest guy or something like this, and he's trying to baptize this baby, and he throws this baby down in the water, and the baby won't cooperate, and he slaps him right across the face. Sure. And daddy grabs him away from him. It's awful, awful. You can't hardly watch it. And I thought, my goodness, you nut. 
What in the world's wrong with you? Listen, tears of joy are different. Tears of joy. When I got saved, I started going to revivals. And I'd hear somebody get up and it'd send them and say, boy, I just thank the Lord for saving me. It's just so good. And tears start running down their eyes. And I thought, my goodness, they're happy. They're not sad. You crying because you're happy? Isn't that a difference? The world don't do that. You know, they don't, they don't get on TV on a talk show and, and say, so-and-so, come on down, and they start bawling. No, everybody just laughs and cups up. I want to see them stand up in church and say, you know, when the Lord saved me, I, and you'll start bawling. Isn't that something? Listen, when, you know what happens when a baby's born? They cry. Just about every baby does. I don't know, they might have been one or two born without crying. And that's the way it is when you get saved. It tears you up inside. Tears start flowing. It, and then when you get happy. I'll never forget one morning I was getting ready for church. It's been many, many years ago. And I was getting ready for church and I was going through some hard times. And I stood there and I was uh, brushing my teeth or something in the, in, the, in the bathroom and I had preaching, playing in the other end, on the radio, and all of, I got to sitting there, I was combing my hair, getting ready for church, and all of a sudden I started thinking about what the Lord done for me, and God got real in the in the bathroom, and it just, I mean, yeah, he, he's just as real there at home as he is right here. If the only time you ever feel God's in church, say something wrong. I mean, brother, I felt him out in the yard, I felt him going down the road, and I was in the bathroom, and about that time, big tear, I started crying, tearing, I said, I can't go to church with my eyes all swelled up. People think I've been drunk and, and, and my eyes all bloodshot and I'll never forget saying, God, you've been good to me. The world don't understand that. I've, I've had people tell me, they say, why is that woman crying? And I said, because she's happy. What? You don't cry when you're happy. That kind of happy you do. That's one thing you know. Tears of joy. Have you ever had them? You know what I'm talking about. If you hadn't, you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's one reason you know we have the right one. Number three, quickly and I'll hurry. Our old time Christianity is the only one that has the fruits. You know how Jesus told you you'd know which belief is right? By their fruits ye shall know them. You know a tree by the fruit that it bears. If a tree's out in the yard and it's got apples all over it, that is an apple tree. If it has grapes coming out of a vine, that's a grape vine. You know the tree by the fruit that it bears. And look at the fruits of Christianity. All of our hospitals, all of our care centers, all of our missions. I mean, all the good work that Christians have done. Listen, these people that hate God and cuss Christianity, they better thank their lucky stars, brother, they are some Christians in this world. Because if they wasn't, this world would really be in a mess. If they'd done these things, the green tree, you wait till it gets dry when God's people's out of here. And buddy, it's really gonna get bad. You know what? You know Christianity is right because of the fruit that it bears. All of these um, help places, all of the rehabs, uh, just about all hospitals, just about all colleges were started by people as a Christian ministry by the Christian faith, just about all of them. George Mueller cared for 10,000 orphans. Raised $8 million and never took up an offering. Prayed it in. He'd have a house full of kids sitting there waiting for supper and no food in the house. And there was a couple of times when they were sitting there at the table and he'd say, all right, let's ask the blessing. They had to maybe have some water and some bread. And about that time he'd say, Lord, we thank you for this food we're about to eat. And when he's praying, somebody's knocking on that door. And he'd open the door and a man would say, I just was going down the road and the Lord told me to bring these potatoes and this meat and everything and brought them kids food and set them down there over and over and over and over. That's how you know the fruits, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. You know Christianity is right because of its fruits, people, fruits. I mean, you know, by the way, did you know where false, other false religions get their converts? False religions get their converts out of dead, dull, dry churches where people think they're Christians. You know where real Bible-believing Christians get their converts? From a pool hall, from a crack house. 
from somewhere out there in the, in the world where their life is ruined by sin. Billy Sunday, used, he was a baseball player and played for uh, I think the Chicago, I think it might have been the White Sox back then. And Billy Sunday held the record for running the bases faster than anybody else running barefooted. And they, wouldn't, they won't let you do that now, of course, but he'd run them bases back uh, barefoot, and then Billy Sunday uh, was down near the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago one, one night, and they were having church in there. And his life was all messed up. He was in sin. See, he wasn't in a false church, and then another false church got him out of a false church. That's where they get theirs. About 80% of the converts, Mormon, Jehovah Witnesses, come out of dead, so-called Protestant, that's what they call them, churches. Billy Sonny is just a sinner. And he went that night in there and got saved. Man, that boy got saved. Everything changed. He gave up a salary. would be like now millions of dollars a year for about, you know, $200 a week. And he gave that up and went to work as a preacher. And he got to preach somewhere. See, Billy Sunday was the main evangelist in America. You heard him last Sunday night if you were here. Last Sunday night we had Billy Sunday actually preaching on the video. A rare, rare uh, video of him preaching. And uh, Billy Sunday preached right up till the time Billy Graham became a national evangelist. Billy Sunday died. And Billy Sunday preached and they said he said, shook hands with a, I, I, hundreds of thousands of people that got saved. You know what got Billy Sunday saved? Same thing that got me and you saved. Amen. If a God come up to me when I was in my teenagers and I was playing in a rock band and playing ball all the time, if a guy come up to me and says, why don't you come to our church? I'd say, why would I want to do that? And he'd say, well, we learn a lot about life. And I said, well, why would I want to do that? But when I went to church that night and I realized there was a hell and I realized there was a heaven and I realized there was a God that loved me and wanted me, that's what got me. That's what got me. And that's what'll get you if you get God. Amen. <laughs> Amen has the fruits. Lastly, I'll say this and I'm through. Christianity is the only religion in the world that tells the truth consistently and don't have to change it every few years. Amen. What does that mean? That means cults, other religions, change their belief system with the changing of the times. We Christians believe the same thing they believed in the first century. We don't have to change. Now, I'll, I'll show, you see some of these videos I'll show you guys tonight who say this. We need to drop the word hell. We need to drop the notion of hell because it's not working. And this generation says, church ain't working the way you old timers do it. We're gonna have to wear a new way work. Now, what they don't understand is we are not called to make it work. We're called to preach it and get the gospel out and reach every person and say, now imagine going up to Noah, listen to me. Imagine going up to Noah after he had been preaching for a hundred years and not had one person say, said, Noah, what you're doing ain't working. You need to figure out a way to get people in this ark. And Noah said, that ain't what God told me. God told me it was gonna rain. If you don't get in, well, don't you think it'd be better if you told, built some other arks that people believe different could get in? He said, that ain't what God said. What Noah was doing wasn't working. He had eight people in the ark and the whole world was drowned. We are not called to make it work. We're called to be faithful to our calling and what God said. If it works, hallelujah. If a bunch of people want it, hallelujah. If they don't, hallelujah anyhow. That's the way you know you're in the right group. They don't change with the times. You know, now when we get air conditioning and stuff, but our message don't change. Our faith don't change. Our belief don't change. That's how you know. I'll never forget, I'll never forget many, many times that I've, I've had people tell me, and this, to me, it's one of the best compliments a preacher could get. When a man looks at you and he'll say, I'll tell you one thing, Danny. I'm not a Christian, but I admire you folks. And if I ever get saved, That'll be what I want to be, what you guys are. People know what's real and what's not. I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. Amen? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed.
Every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. God may be speaking to you, I don't know. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I wonder if we take just a minute and ask you to search your heart, my friend. Right there where you sit or stand, would you ask yourself this question? Is everything right? Everything right? If you'd like to slip out of your seat, make your way down here and make a new, fresh commitment to the Lord, you can do that right now. Something's already coming. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't even know that you're saved. I don't know. I don't know a lot of y'all. Maybe you're here this morning and have doubts. I don't know. Maybe you're here and you know you're saved, but, but you're not, not uh, living like you should. Why don't you come? Why don't you come right now, will you? Just come right now. So you say, Lord, I'm, Lord, I want to get right. Lord, I want to do better. Lord, I know time's running out. The devil's doing everything he can to stop me. Lord, help me to get back in there, get back on fire for you and live for you. Dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you take these few words this morning and speak to people's heart. God, I ask in Jesus' name that the Holy Ghost would take the hearts of people and help us to love you and serve you and do right. Oh God, I ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'd bless this place, keep your hand on it, thank you for what you've done for us. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord, that you'd bless every single person here today, touch every heart, move on every life. God, I pray for these on the altar this morning, that you'd give them grace, give them strength. Oh, God, help us, Lord, not to give up, not to back up, not to turn back, but to get back on fire for you like we should be. God, will thank you and praise you for it. Have you in our heart? Bless that special service tonight. God, do what ought to be done in every life. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Amen. Amen. You see some of that tonight, what I've been trying to illustrate this morning. Miss that. Amen. 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 I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. So it don't fit in this generation, preacher. You're absolutely right. It don't. It don't. And it, it, and it won't. And it shouldn't. You fit in this generation. You're whacked up, buddy. You're crazy. Generation going to hell 90 miles an hour. May God help us. Believe right. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. All minds and hearts clear. We'll stop right there. We'll give you time to fellowship now. Be careful getting out of here. A lot of people in here, and the kids are running the buses and stuff, so be real careful. Uh, don't forget now service tonight, the third message in the series, What Changed Church? That'll be tonight at 6 o'clock. Come pray. All right. Don't miss it. And uh, Lord bless you till then. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Uh, but Jimmy, you dismiss us. And everybody fellowship for you.